everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Bonnie and this is Happy Space Creates. Thank you so much for joining me today. Join me every week for crafting content and sewing related videos. So today I'm going to be filming with you a really exciting project. I know I say that every time but this one truly is very exciting. So I'm going to be filming with you how to make a memory quilt. So if you want to see how it's done, do stay tuned. <music> memory quilt is it is usually made out of clothing from a loved one so it is a way of keeping those special memories and turning it into an item which we can cherish so sometimes it is made out of clothing from a loved one who has passed away um, in this case we are going to be making it out of baby grows um, from my friend's child who has just celebrated their first birthday so this is going to be their first birthday um, and I'm going to be making a present out of all the baby grows that they've worn throughout the year. So my friend has lovingly um, sorted out some of her favourite ones that she purchased for her little one. And I've actually done this for her before. So I made a blanket for her firstborn child. So if I show you what I mean, I will hold this up for you now. Um, so this if you can see is the quilt that I made for her little one on his first birthday um, and it is full of her favourite baby grows that he wore in his first year. So I'm going to be making exactly the same um, but using the baby grows from her second child. So they're going to have matching blankets and I think it is such a lovely keepsake that they can look at when they grow older and see all the cute outfits that they used to have. So I'm going to be filming with you step by step how to do this because I see a lot of people asking and I think it is such a lovely gift to make. Um, just to let you know that this method that I'm using is my preferred method. I know other people might do it in a different way, but this is the way that I found it works for me. I get a great result from it and I find that it works well longevity wise as well. So it does wear very well. Um, also another thing to note that this method of how I'm doing um, with a quilt can actually be used in any way you like. So you could use this method to make a blanket or a teddy bear, or you could you could literally make anything out of it if you wanted to just reuse that material. Um, but I do think like a quilt is just a lovely keepsake. So I will tell you what you need to get started. So first of all, a little bit of information about this quilt that I have previously made, because I'm gonna be making one identical. I want to make sure that the sizing is the same. So this quilt actually measures 27 inches by 33 inches, um, just so that will help you gauge how big you need and how many baby grows you need. Each of the squares measures uh, five and a half inches. So in total, there's 20 squares, so four along the top and then five going down. Um, and then I have also made this um, these edging pieces there is 20 of these going round as well. So do make sure that you have enough baby grows to have 20 main squares and 20 edges as well. Um, like I said, each of these squares measures five and a half inches and these little edging pieces are actually just cut in half from these ones. So my friend has lovingly separated loads of her cherished baby grows and I'm gonna be going through some of those now to explain to you what you're looking for. So some things you will need for this project before you get started, I like to use a quilting square. This measures six and a half inches. Um, I use this for ease. I've made a few of these blankets now, so I just find that the quilter square is nice and easy as this is my whole template and I just cut around the whole thing. Alternatively, you could always make a template out of cardboard if you wanted to. Um, that would be super easy for you to do. You just need to measure six and a half inches on a scrap piece of cardboard that you could use for all of your templates. The next thing you will need is medium weight interfacing. So because most baby grows are made in like a jersey type fabric, you will need to stabilize the fabric to stop it from stretching. So you will need medium weight interfacing. Um, preferably iron on because it's nice and quick. The other thing that you will need is a tape measure, a pencil, some scissors, your sewing machine, and obviously thread as well. Um, you will also need some quilt 
batting, which is like a soft layer that goes between these, so this side and this side. And you will also need a meter of some backing fabric as well. So any fabric pattern you want some quilting cotton to go on the back. So you will need a meter of that as well. I will just explain to you a little bit about the type of baby grows that you will need. Um, ideally, you need them the bigger the better. Um, you can use some really titchy tiny ones. I've got a couple in this set. Look how diddy that is, it's so cute. Um, I probably won't be able to use this as one of the main squares um, because it is going to be quite a stretch. Um, I actually might be able to, um, but what I'm probably going to do is save these tiny ones for the edging strips, um, just because it might be a bit bulky if I have some of that seam included. So you do need some that are of a decent size, obviously, to fit your template over. Now I'm just going to share with you some tips that I like to use to make sure that once the quilt is all together, it has quite an aesthetic feel to it. So how I have organised my baby grows, I have got about 25 baby grows here. I did ask her to put some spares in there just in case the ones that she had given me weren't going to work out. So do have around 25 baby grows to use. I have separated mine into patterns. So these have all got like patterned fabrics on them. And then I've separated these ones into slogans. So such as things like that, you can see that that's gonna be a great motif for one of the larger squares, much like this one as well. So I've tried to separate them into big um, motif pictures and then ones like these ones that are more of a generic design, I've separated those into two different piles but as you can see they actually go together really well so I will make note that these two should definitely be on the blanket because they work really well as a pattern together. So what you're kind of looking for are similar colours, similar patterns, um, like I said this whole pile here is of patterns but they're actually all of animals so that's going to work really well together and again these ones here so this one is an animal and this one is a stripe, but they're of a very similar colour palette, so they're going to work really well on the blanket. Um, and then you just kind of choose ones that are of a similar colour palette, and that means that when you put them all together, they're going to work really well. Um, so yeah, that's some interesting things to make note of, just to make the uh, blanket look more aesthetically pleasing when it's all put together. The other thing to take note of is some interesting details that you can find on your baby grows. For example, these um, buttons here are very, very cute and they're also very similar to these buttons. So it's definitely a detail that we should try and incorporate into the blanket as well because they work really well together. Um, so that's basically all I need to tell you about what you need before you get started. Um, so we can move on to the preparation process. Now if you do have a cutting mat and a rotary cutter, this is going to make your process a lot easier for you. But if not, if you've got some chalk and some scissors as well, you can actually just draw around your template. So once you have everything sorted out and you're ready to go, we need to start um, cutting down our material. So I'm going to start off with this little turtle guy. So we're going to lay him out. Um, and it's best if you just make sure everything's laid flat. If you do need to iron anything at all, do make sure that you've done that beforehand. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to lay our template over the top and we're going to try and get as much of this little guy in as possible. Now what we can do is we can centralise our tortoise here and there you go, he's right in the middle there. Now what we want is ideally one layer of fabric, but if you can see at the top here we have his neckline into the square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly stay stitch this neckline down to the second sheet um, and then we're going to cut him out so that we get to keep this wonderful detail.
So now this top section is completely secured to the back. We're going to cut that square out and then I'll show you what to do. So now that bit's secure, we're going to now centralise this little design here. So we've got our little tortoise in the middle and we now have a full square and we actually have that neckline included as well. So we're going to cut out both layers, including the neckline. It's going to be a little tough. That's it. Now we are left with two layers that are actually secured together at the neckline. So what you want to do is you just want to carefully take your scissors and trim that back layer off. Um, so it will just create one square at the front. So let's do that now. Be careful not to cut through that front layer. So that is a dud layer. And now you've got no bulk at the back. You've just got that artificial neckline. So when it actually is in the quilt, it will still look like the t-shirt. So do that with any pieces where you need to incorporate any design in with the whole square. So next up is our little hello t-shirt. And again, we're going to line him up in the centre and we're going to try and get him as central as possible. There we go. Luckily, this um, quilter's rule here has a line across it, so it helps us keep things nice and central. If you are using the cardboard template, this is going to be more difficult for you because you can't see through your design. Um, but I will leave a link for these quilter's squares for you in the description box down below in case you do want to invest in one of these. And there's our hello. So he's gonna to go to that side and this back piece is gonna to go to the other side for now in case we need that for edging. Okay, so basically we're gonna repeat this process with every single baby grow until we have got our 20 main squares um, and 20 edging strips. So join me back here shortly. So now you have your 20 edging pieces and your 20 main pieces as well. It's time to start stabilizing the fabric. So grab your medium weight interfacing and your template and cut out exactly the same amount. You can use your template to cut through multiple layers at a time to speed up the process. Now using your iron, grab your main square of fabric, place your iron on interfacing with the shiny side down and secure it in place. Repeat this process with all of your squares. So I've actually run out of interfacing, so I'm gonna to have to come back and do the rest of that later on, but I just wanted to show you the reasons why I'm using interfacing. Now, if you have a little look at this piece of fabric here, it's very stretchy. Um, and it has no stiffness to it, no weight. It's very lightweight. Um, it's quite curly and wrinkly. And if you have a little look at this piece compared to this piece, that's the reason why I'm using interfacing today. So it takes the stretch and the um, fluidity out of the fabric. So it means it's stiff. Um, and because babies' clothes are quite often made of all different types of fabric, what the interfacing does is it makes the fabric all feel the same weight. And you can see that that pile looks completely different as to what it did earlier on. This is the uninterfaced fabric. And now this fabric looks all nice and crisp and stiff. And it just means that when we're sewing those edges together, your sewing machine will treat them like they're two of the same. And it will just lead to a neater finished project. So don't skip the interfacing because it will lead to a better blanket at the end of the day. So now we get to move on to the really fun part. So now you get to start laying out all of your squares and deciding in which order you would like them to be. I like to mix up shapes and colours just to make the blanket interesting. So take your time on this process and um, try and do it a few different ways just to see what works best. There's no right or wrong way to this, um, so just have some fun with it. 
You want to lay your pieces out in rows of four and you want five rows in total. So now that I'm happy with my layout, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate these squares into smaller blocks. So I'm going to take one of my squares and fold it over the other and then I'm going to pin it down this side so I remember which side I'm stitching together when I take it to the sewing machine. So you want to do this in groups of twos all the way down and this will just help you um, not get confused and have to keep laying it out again and again. And do this with all of your squares. So now you've got all your squares pinned together, we know that we're sewing along this seam here. So make sure that all your corners are matching to give you a nice neat edge. Next you want to grab a quilting foot, if you have one. Um, I'm not actually sure if this is called a quilting foot, but it's basically a quarter inch seam foot. So we're going to add that onto our sewing machine. This isn't essential, but if you do have one, it will make sure that everything stays nice and neat. If not, there is also a um, seam guide magnet that you can get. You can pick these up really cheap and they just attach to the side of your sewing machine to make sure you're sewing along a straight line. So there's always that option as well. So let's take this to our sewing machine. We're going to add our foot on, just like that. And then we're going to sew nice and straight with a quarter inch seam allowance down these seams. So we're going to do that to all of our patches. So next what we're going to do is we're going to just press all of our seams open on the back here. And that's just going to reduce the bulk when we come to sew these strips together. So make sure your iron's nice and hot and press all of those seams open just like that and repeat that on all of your squares so I'm going to show you how to connect these two pieces together now and we're going to form a block so if you did take a photograph of your layout on the floor do go back and take a look and reference that so that you know which pieces are connecting together so we're going to lay our two duos out like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to fold one on top of the other like so. And now you're going to pin along this bottom edge here making sure that you match the seams on both sides. So we're going to start at that seam just there. Again making sure that all your corners are neat. So you're going to do this on each and every patch that matches together so that when you sew along this line it will fold out and create this block. Okay so now we have attached all of our duos together in a strip down one side and then you have a, another strip of duos together so basically keep connecting all of your duos together and then what you want to do is we're going to join them down the middle now all the way along here to create one big square so you want to pin them very carefully and make sure you're joining all the seams all the way along and things should fit together really nicely if you've done all your measuring correctly if you have any like raw edges that aren't quite neat do just give those a little trim down so that they're flat it will make your seams go together much neater so i will join you back here when i have joined these together okay so now we're going to take our minis here and we're going to connect them in exactly the same way so we have got two strips of four and we're just going to flatten out all our seams on the back here because it's going to make it for easier sewing. And then these two strips are going to be connected to the top and the bottom 
of your main blanket. So we're just going to flatten out these seams. So these get connected to the top and bottom of your blanket. So lay your top of your blanket out after you've given it a good press. And then let's have a look at this strip. So we don't want that one because that one's the same. So do have a little think about your placement. So those ones go really well together. These ones here. So once again, we're going to fold down the tops and connect it at the seams. So stitch that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and do the same for the bottom. So those are now attached and what we're going to do is we're going to give it all a really good press once again. Um, now it's okay here if your seams don't match because the sides um, are a little bit off centre anyway so if you do have any seams that aren't quite lined up it doesn't actually matter at all and if you have any edges um, that are overhanging um, do just trim that off just to uh, keep it all in a straight line this is totally normal because stretchy fabrics can sometimes stretch out of shape a little bit during the cutting process so not all of um, the squares are exactly the same size so if you do have any overhang just trim that off and just make sure that all your seams are super duper flat as well so do get it on the back and then you want to repeat the process with those side pieces so you should have strips of five going down the side So next we're going to attach the side strips down to the remaining side of your blanket. So what you want to do is you want to take this last end of your strip and you want to attach it to the very last end of the quilt. So when they are attached and you fold it back, there is an overhang. So your seam of your strip will actually finish in the middle of these squares now. So you don't need to worry about lining those up. So lay your quilt out flat and then once again pin this down from corner to corner um, matching the ends and then stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance like with all your other seams. So now both your tops and your sides are attached time to give everything a final press Make sure all your seams are nice and flat and you've trimmed off any overhanging edges um, and it should look like a complete baby blanket now. So this is the topper and if you join me in a bit I will show you how to add the um, wadding and the backing fabric as well. So do join me back here in just a moment. So well done everyone, you have completed the hardest part. Your quilt topper has now been completed so it is all put together, it's nice and sturdy. So let's get this process finished and I will show you what you need to do to complete it. You're going to need to grab your fabric wadding and some cotton fabric. This is for your backing. This is 100% cotton as well. So stay tuned and I will show you what you need to do next. This process is called quilting and then the uh, finishing part is called backing. So I'm gonna try and get this in as much as possible but it is quite a big quilt so I'm gonna try and squeeze this all in the same lens but basically you want to lay your wadding out on a flat surface and then you're going to lay your quilt over the top. Now I'm going to cut a little bit extra on each side so I'm gonna cut maybe an inch um, over of the wadding because when we quilt it um, things can shrink back a little bit so you want to make sure you've got 
maybe a couple of centimeters or an inch on either side um, and then cut this out make sure it's smooth nice and flat and just pin it onto the wadding so that nothing moves as you're cutting um, so yeah just cut your wadding out leaving an inch on either side So you now have your wadding cut out to the same size as your quilt but you've left a inch either side as well. So what we can do is we're going to pin this quilt quite securely onto the wadding fabric and that's because we just don't want it to move at all while we're quilting. Now when we're quilting um, what I'm going to be doing is basically I'm going to use a stitch in the ditch method which means I'm going to be re-sewing along some of these seams and I just want to um, sew along some of these seams so that I can attach the topper to the wadding and that's just going to mean that it doesn't go all like baggy on the inside so that it's actually connected to the wadding. So I'm just going to follow some of these seams not not all of them, just to make it nice and connected. So if you wanted, you could even just go around the outsides. But I like to go around the outsides here, and then I'm gonna go down the middle, and then I'm gonna go across the center just to make sure it's nice and secure. So you can follow me at the sewing machine while I do that as well. So we're gonna start off with our central line here. I think I always find it easier to start off in the middle of the quilt. Um, and then it just means that everything is smoothing out evenly as we go so we're gonna start off on this middle line now you have got quite a few layers to work through um so do take your time stitching it because um go slow and steady and you'll win the race i think because if you rush this your lines will be really visible so just take your speed nice and slow and you'll win so let's make a start So my blanket is now actually anchored to the wadding. So I have just done a central line down the middle and then a horizontal line going across. So that is actually attached to the wadding and that will prevent it from going like baggy when you back it. If you want to, you can quilt it around these outers as well, which I am going to do just because I feel like it's going to make it some more secure on the wadding and you're going to find the process easier but you don't necessarily have to if you don't want to um these two lines will be enough to anchor the blanket but i'm just going to go along these outer edges just to make sure that everything is nice and neat and tight so you can follow along with me as i do that if you want to but you can skip this step if you choose to Our blanket is now successfully quilted. If you look on the back here, you can see these anchoring lines here to hold the wadding on. So now what we need to do is we need to add the backing fabric. So smooth all of your quilt out and you will see that you have some leftover wadding that needs to be trimmed. So now's a really good time to go and trim off that excess wadding. So I'm gonna grab my scissors. Okay, so that's all trimmed down. You can see we've got no excess hanging over now. So we're going to fold this up and put it to one side. And then we're going to grab our backing fabric, which is just here. So this is gorgeous fabric, by the way. I purchased this off eBay and I will leave a link in the description down below because it's just gorgeous. So you can see here, that my fabric has a directional print on it. So it's got the sunshines and rainbows. So we're gonna have our quilt facing this way up. So I'm gonna lay the quilt out on top so that we can cut the right side. So I'm just gonna drag it to the corners. So I'm going to lay this on top and now I can cut the right size of fabric. So I'm basically just gonna cut round this quilt to make sure that I have enough fabric. 
There we have the backing fabric all cut out. Take that out the way, lay our quilt down, smooth it all out, get it nice and flat. Do use an iron if you need to, because this is gonna make a huge difference. Make sure it's all nice and flat. And then we're going to lay our backing fabric with the direction in the right way. So my rainbows are facing upwards and we're gonna put them right sides together. Um, so you're gonna lay the backing down there and you're gonna smooth it out. So you want to get this nice and tight here. So corner to corner, pin it all the way around, corner to corner, smooth it all out nice and tight and pin it. If you do have any excess hanging over, give it a little trim, um, but you want this to be nice and tight here because that's gonna give you a really professional finish to your quilt. Okay, so when it's all smoothed over, pin it all the way around. Okay, that is all pinned. Now, when we come to sew this, you can leave a gap wherever you want but it's essential that you leave a gap unsewn so that you can turn this all back in on itself. So I'm gonna leave a little gap just here so I'm not gonna sew these parts so that I have a little gap so that I can turn it through later on. So there we are, I have my backing attached and I have a little gap here for me to turn it through. I'm just going to clip these corners here don't go all the way through the um, stitches, just clip those corners to reduce the bulk on all your sides. And then we're gonna turn it through. This is the exciting part, because you get to see what your finished blanket is actually going to look like. There you go, it's all attached. Lay it out, looks amazing. So you're probably gonna need to give this a good press now, and then I will just show you how to finish off those edges in a second. Um, but yeah, take it to your iron and give it a good press. Okay, so you can see here we've still got some raw edges, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, give everything a good press, and as you're pressing, you want to make sure that these raw edges are folded in on each other so let's just tuck them in and then give that a little press as well try and smooth it all under can be a bit fiddly this bit but it's worth it again the more pins the merrier because we don't want any of this to sort of shuffle What is going to happen now though is we're just going to create a little bit of a border and we're going to include it in this closing of this gap here. So um, I've tucked under about one centimetre so if I sew along this seam um, from about here I will be able to close this gap but I'll also be able to continue to make sort of like a border around the edge um, and it will look like this one which is on the other blanket. So. You can see that I've just finished off this edge a little bit here. So I'm just gonna do that all the way around this blanket and that's gonna give it a really nice, neat, finished edge. So let's do that. And there you have it, your baby memory quilt. Voila! If you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching!